Uh, that's where we stopped last time. Uh, we remember we introduced with you a, a few operations on matrices, and the the most complex out of those operations was matrix multiplication. Uh, I don't know if you had a chance to look at that, uh, but we have to move on. And uh, so the, the example which I want to I'd like to do with you is this one. It's the example on page six. Uh, it looks at the matrix like this, and it says uh, try to find the nth power of such matrix, and they explain what the nth power is. It's here. That's the nth power. Quite expectable definition. You might try to approach this question directly by just taking like a, well, if you don't know any other method, if, if I didn't know any other method, what I would have done probably, I would just multiply, like a, I first I found a square, multiplying one with another, then I found a cube, make another multiplication, and then I would, I would, I would try to see any pattern in the result and see, to try to guess whether we can uh, predict what the result in general will be. Uh, however, there is a very nice approach to this question, very effective one. It's based on, on our advanced experience with numbers. And that's actually, that's how many things on matrices are done. You just try to uh, think of analogy with numbers, and then you try to see whether this analogy, in fact, works or not. So here, look what we're going to do. Uh, first, I'll tell you this. Uh, I'll take a special matrix like this. Look at this. I call it a matrix N. It's very similar to my J matrix. It's the one where lambda is set to zero, in fact, right? If I set this lambda to zero, this matrix will be just N, N like this. And I'll make this observation that actually my J matrix, this J matrix, it can be now represented with the help of this N matrix like this. And that's the key step here. It will be lambda times the identity of size three plus n. Right? Everybody with me? Everybody agrees that actually j's can be, can be represented like this? Well, if it is so, then what we have to do right now, when we go after the nth power, it's the same as if we, if we go after the nth power like this. Right? It's just the nth power of a binomial, isn't it? So, rather than going directly, after I made this First steps, after I represent my j as a combination of lambda i plus n, we're looking at the binomial like this, and when you look at the binomial like this, your first suggestion will be, when you look at the binomial which is raised to the power n, what's your suggestion will be? Binomial formula, right? Well, yeah, we know the binomial formula for numbers. We don't know it for matrices, but at least that's, that's where the analogy comes. That's where our experience comes, comes to, help us, to help us. Well, I'll, here's, the, here's the binomial formula for matrices. I mean, I just, I just, I will write the binomial formula as if it is for numbers, but I put the matrices in, and then I'll ask the question whether we have something like this or not. So if I have two matrices, square matrices of size k, then, well, just, just if, if, if I write the binomial expansion, then sum of these two raised to power n, that's the binomial expans expansion for it. nth power of the first term, binomial coefficient, uh, the regular things, dots which, which, which hide the most, of the most of the expansion, that's the term which is before the last one, and that's the last term in the expansion. Now the question comes, do we really have something like this for matrices? The answer is, no. Yes. Thank you very much. In general, it's, it's, it, it is not so. I mean, if you try to, I mean, like, if you try to prove this relation for matrices the way you do it for numbers, you will hit lots of obstacles, and all of those obstacles will come from this one single problem with matrices. Matrix multiplication is not commutative. It's something we discovered with you last time. However, it's not really end of the, like, a big problem in this particular question, because what we can say, actually, I mean, if you try to repeat the argument, the, the proof of the binomial formula for numbers for matrices, you can make this extra, extra thing, extra condition, if you introduce this extra condition, like this. If A and B commute, in fact, then we do have the binomial formula. So if we have this extra assumption that A and B equal B times A, it's not always so. Not for every couple of matrices this is true. We saw an example last time. But if this is true, and that's something I claim, I'm, I, I will I just hide some details, but as long as, you, as long as you have this extra assumption that 
a, a and B commute, and that's the algebraic expression of two matrices being commute. If you, as long as you have that these two matrices commute, you can use the binomial expansion for these two matrices. There is a bit of an argument behind this single statement, but essentially this is just a repetition of the argument behind the numerical binomial formula. Because when matrices commute, they become like almost like numbers. Nothing stands in the way anymore. Now, the question, the next thing which I want to ask you now, do we have this extra condition for this couple of matrices? Well, of course we do. Because if you multiply n with the i with the identity matrix, that's just the nature of the identity matrix, the result will be n. And the same nature will be if you multiply the other way around. That's something we discovered with you last time again. So for this particular couple of matrices, for this particular couple of matrices, we do have this commutativity assumption, and that's why we can use the binomial expansion. All of this, all of these simple things, now they, they sound very simple, but all of this came from our experience with numbers. That's how we, we try, try to propagate our experience with numbers to matrices, and look what we can come up with now. So if I use my binomial expansion, uh, it's here. So here's my binomial expansion applied to these two matrices. Now I can do that because they commute. Nth power of i, uh, the second term. Actually, I put here in place the third term. Uh, and the, the rest of them is here. The, the rest of them here, yes. This is a binomial expansion directly applied to the couple of matrices, uh, lambda i, lambda identity plus n. Right. Now time has come to do some computations because we here, here we're looking at the powers of, well, identity, obviously. When you compute the power of identity matrix, if you compute the power like this of the identity matrix, you obviously will end up with it. So if you go for the kth power of your identity matrix, you multiply your i with itself k times, but every time you do that, because it's, that's the identity, it's a property, a fundamental property of the identity. Every time you will end up with the identity again. So the power of the identity, quite expectable, will be just the identity. The computational, co computational part here, of course, the powers of n matrix, of this n matrix. And that's something we're going to look at right now. Uh, let me just do one power. Uh, well, what I claim is this. If I take the square of my matrix, the result will be like this. Look at this. These are two, two matrices like n. If you multiply first row here with the first column here, obviously it will be zero. That's why you have zero here. First row by the second column, again, the identity state, they do not match because you multiply this zero with one. Again, you have the zero element here. When you multiply the first row by the last column, that's where your positions of your ones will be, like a second position, that's why we have one here. The same go for this element. For this zero, you multiply the second row here by the first column here, which is zero. Second row here by the second row here, again zero. If you just check everything, you will realize that the square actually just matrix matrix like this. And if you go after cube, if you go after cube, so if you take this matrix and you multiply by the end by the n square, if you multiply these two together. Again, if you do the multiplication process of matrices, and uh, probably this time I'll, I'll hide the details, you'll realize the result will be zero matrix. Now, if you multiply zero matrix, if you go for the higher powers of your n, if you go for the higher powers of your n, all of the other po powers higher than three, all of them will be zero too. This is a key step in the whole example here, that the n is such a beautiful matrix that if you keep raising it, the matrix itself is non-zero matrix. That's another very interesting <coughs> phenomenon which happens only with matrices. It never happens with numbers. If you multiply numbers, if, if you take any number which is non-zero, if you keep <coughs> multiplying this number with itself many times, no matter how many times, you will never hit zero as a result. Whereas here, look, we hit zero on the, on the, on the third, uh, third step. We multiply non-zero matrix with itself three times and we ended up with zero. It's an interesting phenomenon which exists in matrices. That's why with matrices you have to be very careful. The, some, of the, some of the things which happens there, they're quite different from numbers. But in, 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 the, in the scope of this example, it's very helpful to us because it looks like all of the powers of n except the first power, this one, and the second power, all of the other powers zero. So in this binomial expansion, 
in this binomial expansion. Only this, only this first three terms will deliver something. The rest will just vanish. So if I bring this, if I put this together, all of this, what, 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 what we have, so let me just remove this factor. We no longer need this. Let me remove this one. We no longer need this. Let me put this back in. So if I now do it, look at this. My nth power of J matrix, in this binomial expansion, I only care now for the first three terms. The rest disappeared. We have, this, is, this stands for this. This now, the remaining part of this identity is gone, it's just n, which is left. And the last term which is present is n squared. That's all there is to it. Out of the huge expansion which has n terms, we, only, we have only three which, which are left. And these three, we, we know them very well. Here's, the, here's how they look in the matrix form. Look at this. Here's the, uh, here's the identity matrix. That's the one which represents this, this term. That's the component of the, that's, that's the part which represents this term. This is the, the component which represents this term. It's here. Here's the binomial coefficient. Binomial coefficient of this size, it's n. Here's the power of lambda. And n matrix, here it is. I just sub it in. That's the n matrix. And finally, the, well, this binomial coefficient, it's here. That's the power of lambda. And then the n square, that's the matrix which is n square. Here it is. If I sub it in, we're looking at the it's something like this. We have now to put together. We have to put together all of these matrices now. But it's very easy. Some, it's very easy thing, right? Because if you if you think about this, when you multiply by lambda this matrix, your lambda will appear in this diagonal position, in this diagonal position, and at this diagonal position. The rest will be will still be zeros. When you multiply this factor across this matrix, this factor will appear here in this position, and at this position, the rest will be zero. Just that's how we scale and multiply the matrices, right? And here, this factor will appear here. When you bring them together, when you add them up, your non-zero elements in each of three components, they will not overlap. Because one here, with zero and zero, none of them will overlap, in fact. So in the result of your addition will be just this matrix. Look at this. On diagonals, you have your lambda to the power n. On the, we actually, there's official name for this, for, this, for this set of elements. If we call this set of elements main diagonal, this set of elements called the next main diagonal. So it's oh, no, actually we we index them. This is this is called the zeroth and uh, sorry the zeroth main diagonal. This is the first main diagonal. This is the second main diagonal. So your powers of lambda they ended up on the first main dia oh, zeroth main diagonal. The first binomial coefficient ended up with with power of lambda ended up on the first main diagonal and the last uh, the second binomial coefficient with the with this power of lambda ended up here on this diagonal yes i don't know it's, it's a good example actually i don't know if, if you if you get this impression but it's it shows you the part the knowledge you had back with numbers it's still useful but you have to be careful when you use this knowledge like with the binomial formula but it's it's a powerful knowledge and you can't disregard it if you if you try to do this question directly it's it's I don't know how to do it directly. But with this method, in fact, you can look at the matrices of similar type to J, like this. It's a matrix of the next order of type similar to J. You see, again, you, you're looking at the matrix with the lambdas on diagonal and ones on the diagonal above the main one. Or actually, there is also the version, like the nth version of it. <coughs> It's not a surprise, actually, that this matrix symbol, like it's so, I mean, there is a nice method of computing the powers of this matrix. This, this particular type of matrices, they have even names. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're called Jordan blocks. Uh, the, the, reason, uh, well, the, the reason they have a name uh, is just, to some extent, every matrix is a combination of Jordan blocks. And that's a very powerful structural result which helps in, in lots of applications. And if you probably, if any of you continue your study with matrices in the second year here, you will see this result in full, uh, I mean, the, the full content of that result. If you take a matrix to the power zero, 
here and you're saying it's it's one, I mean identity. You're saying this is equal to the identity. Well, strictly speaking, I didn't put any powers here. I just said like it's just one single term. But you actually thanks for the comment. It's 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 a it's a good observation. When you when you introduce, let me just put it this way for you. When you introduce this, when when I introduce this, let me put it next here. When I introduced this powers of matrices for you, I explicitly said n must be positive integer. For positive integers, that's a definition of it. For other integers, it, it gets a little bit trouble. We will discuss this how it goes for the other integers. When I say other, I mean, of course, zero and negatives. For zero, that's how you set. For zero, that's a definition of the power. It's not a proof. You can't prove it. It's just that we just set it. We make a convention that any matrix to the power is zero, anyone, including this zero matrix, although this is, this is going to be slippery here. But still, even the zero matrix to the power is zero, we set it to be identity. Full stop. It's not, it's not discussable. It's not disputable. It's just the agreement we make. 